runs the background. Of course, that was President Trump speaking at the Campaign for Life Gala in Washington, D.C. Well, good evening and welcome to the show. You just heard from the president. Right now, though, we have a rare first-hand account from the center of maybe the greatest scandal in modern political history, the FBI spying on the 2016 Trump campaign for nearly two years. Obama administration officials and their dutiful lackeys in the press hysterically denied any of that even happened. Now we know that it did happen. The Obama administration used government agencies to surveil a rival campaign. There's no denying that now. So instead, the usual apologists are claiming it was a good thing, in fact. They were spying on Trump to protect him. And by the way, you have no right to know anything about it. Even asking a question is a sign of disloyalty. Shut up and obey. No thanks. Tonight, we have a direct account of what happened, the first full interview with a Trump campaign official who apparently was targeted by an FBI spy. Sam Clovis was a former national co-chairman of the Trump campaign. In September of 2016, he says he had a face-to-face -face meeting with a man who was believed to be one of the FBI spies on that campaign. Sam Clovis joins us tonight. Sam, thanks for coming on. So, Thanks, Tucker. Thanks for having me on. You believe you had a face-to-face -face encounter with a man paid by Obama's FBI to spy on your campaign. Describe that meeting, if you would. Uh, several days before the September 1st meeting, I had the opportunity to receive emails from, uh, from Stephen, uh, Stephen Halper. Uh, Dr. Halper had sent emails uh, using the imprimatur of him uh, knowing Carter Page um, and asked for a, a sit down with me. Uh, he just wanted to uh, come in and discuss uh, foreign policy and uh, to provide some, what he thought might be uh, his, some of his writings that would be able to contribute and help us uh, in, the, in the campaign. Uh, I arranged that meeting. Uh, we had that meeting in Washington, D.C. on the 1st of September. Uh, it lasted about an hour. Uh, I had the opportunity to discuss uh, over coffee with him uh, his uh, research, and it mostly was focused on China. And then I think after that meeting, and, and it, on the 27th of September, I received an email from him with several attachments. And I can be honest with you, uh, uh, Tucker, I haven't even opened those attachments to this day. I have no idea what was in them, but they were mostly titled papers that dealt with China. I think he used my meeting as a, as a using my uh, uh, meeting as a bona fides with uh, George Papadopoulos to have a meeting with him that I did not know about that was subsequent to, uh, to my meeting with him on the 1st of September. Did, so you didn't know him before? He emailed you cold? No, I did not. Wh no. When did you begin uh, it just to... Came, it was a... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, I just got the email from, uh, from uh, Stefan the, the, that asked for the meeting and he used the fact that he knew Carter Page and of course right. Carter had been associated with our campaign. At what point did you begin to suspect he was working for the FBI seeking to gather information surreptitiously on the campaign? Well, my, our meeting was like two faculty members in the faculty lounge, so I didn't think anything of it until I saw the reporting that started to come out uh, only recently. And then I started to put two and two together. And then it started to make sense to me that perhaps he was probing to find uh, a weak spot in our campaign, uh, someone who might be uh, vulnerable to uh, uh, connecting uh, things back to uh, those elusive uh, 30,000 emails that uh, supposedly the Russians had. And I really think that was what his task was, was to find, to, to create an audit trail uh, back to those emails from someone in the campaign or someone associated with the campaign uh, so that they could develop a stronger case for probable cause to continue uh, to issue warrants and, and, uh, and to further uh, an investigation. Because I really felt uh, after hearing all of these other things and listening to, to uh, the reports that I've, I've read, that this truly was an effort to build something that did not exist. And I really think that was what his mission was. Why haven't you read the attachments to his emails? Well, at, at one, I was busy. I worked 16 to 20 hours a day. Uh, we already had a lot of help on, on uh, foreign policy in the areas of China. Um, I really didn't think that they were going to contribute anything, and frankly, I've gone back and reviewed all, all my emails. I didn't report that meeting uh, to anyone in the campaign, so the meeting was of no consequence to me as far as anything I could remember. And I, I, I've looked through all of my personal emails and, and everything, and I can't find a record of it at all. Interesting. But that meeting may have played a key role in a much larger story. Sam, thank you for that account. Appreciate it. Well, it's great. Thanks for having me on tonight, Tucker. Appreciate it. Thank you.